Hi, my name is Brigitta. I'm from Be In My Bonnet and For Your Head Hat Blocks. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a wet felted hat. Uh, I'm going to go through the tools and materials that you'll need. I'll show you the sequence of laying out the roving. Next we'll be doing the wet felting process. Uh, and then finally we're going to block the hat. The whole thing takes about four to five hours, so if you're ready, let's get started. I'm going to show you the tools and materials that you're going to need to make a wet felted hat. First of all, you're going to need some roving, uh, about six ounces or 180 grams. A hat block form to shape your hat on. A resist pattern, which I showed you how to make in the first video. We'll need a water containment system. What I've got here, and I'm going to be using, is just a uh, boot tray. We need a couple of pieces of uh, mesh cloth. This is some thin uh, carpet underlayment. You could also use bubble wrap. I've got some water bottles here, and I'll be using some soap in those. Any kind of liquid soap will be fine. You may need uh, an agitator to assist with the felting process. Some towels or sponges in a bowl maybe to mop up some of the water. Uh, wire or a rope. This is uh, not necessary but you might need it <clears throat> depending on the hat form that you have. And uh, I'll also be using some uh, sand bags. These are just uh, some socks uh, filled with sand. Okay, so we have our water containment system, our one mesh sheet, and our resist pattern. In the last video, we made a resist that will fit a head size that's 22 and a half inches in circumference and 9 inches from ear to ear. In this project, I'm going to be making a hat that has a brim, so I've added several inches on to the bottom of my original resist to accommodate the brim. We're going to be laying down six layers of roving in alternating horizontal and vertical rows. We're going to start the first row horizontal at the bottom. So we just pull off a gentle piece and just a few centimeters or so is going to be laying over the edge of the resist form. And we're just going to follow and make a nice row, grasping a little, laying down. These are overlapping rows, and the roving is flush with the edge of the uh, resist. Okay, we come to the end, we also have a uh, little section overhanging. And we're going to overlap the second row, overlapping the first, and I'm trying to make even amounts of pull from my roving. Good, so I'm just going to continue this on all the way up to the top of the form. Okay, so we've got our first layer of horizontal row in place, and I'm just going to little pat it together a little bit. Um, we do have a, about a centimeter of roving overlapping the edge, the round edge, but I'm going to try and uh, push it in at the very bottom so it's flush, and then just give it a gentle pat to piece it together. Now we're going to take our second mesh cloth, place that over, and we're going to turn over the pattern. going to continue on the other side of the hat again with our first horizontal layer. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just going to tuck in the edges here at the bottom so there's not too much or any roving coming out of the bottom. Pat it down. And now I'm going to be folding over these gentle edges. Now we're going to do our first horizontal row on the second side. Starting at the bottom, just a centimeter or so over and again we're going to overlap. And I'm going to continue that all the way up. Okay, we got the second uh, side, first horizontal row done. I'm just going to pat that down again. Really try to flush the edges at the bottom. But the sides is where the front and the back are going to be joined, so that's why we need to have a little bit of uh, uh, overlap. Okay. So again, we're going to put down the mesh cloth. Flip the pattern that we're working on over. And we're now going to roll up the edges. Okay, great. Now we're ready to add our second row. This one is going to be vertical. Just going to do the same process, but on this we're going to start on one side and we're going to keep flush with the edge. So we're not going to go over the edge like we did on the horizontal row just going to make it nice and flush. So we're going to make it flush with the bottom and flush with the sides. Great. So I'm going to take that all the way around. Each piece of roving that I'm pulling off and laying down is slightly overlapping and again I'm following the circumference of the pattern. And I'll follow that all the way through. Each piece overlapping. So I'm just going to continue that each all the way up. So we're doing vertical rows now. Okay, so almost finished my first vertical row on my first side. Making sure everything is nice and overlapping. Great. And right at the edges too. Okay, so great. I'm just going to pat that down a tad again. If I see any gaps, I'm just going to fill that in. Good. Nice and flush at the bottom. OK, 
Okay, instead of turning it over this time, I'm now going to add another horizontal row. So this is my third layer on one side. I'm alternating horizontal. I have a vertical. Now I'm going to do another horizontal. And so again, I'm starting at the bottom. I'm going to keep my roving flush at the bottom, but just a fraction over the edge around the circumference here. And I'm just going to keep building up the layers. So again, this is the third layer with a fraction overlap. So again, I'm going to do another layer of horizontal rows all the way up to the top. So we're almost finished our third layer on the first side going horizontally. Great. So again, I'm just going to pat that down so it, some of the fibers start to adhere. Great. And one more time, I'm going to turn it over. We're going to go back to this side, which only has one horizontal layer. So from here again, we're going to fold up the edges. So the seam on the side, where this is where the roving is going to blend, create our seam. We don't want it to be too bulky. So that's why we're trying to give it a nice little shape, see where we have any deficiencies. Top it up at the bottom. Okay, now we're going to continue on. We have one horizontal row on this side. Now we're going to add a vertical row. This is our second vertical row. And here again, I'm going to make it the roving flush with the bottom of the form and flush with the sides of the form. We're going to overlap that, each piece. Continue that all the way around. So I'm going to continue that all the way around here all the way up, and then I'm going to continue with my vertical rows. So I've got one vertical row here, I've placed more here, and I'm just going to follow the vertical lines around. I'll do another one, another one, join them all up. Okay, so we've got our first vertical row completed on this side. Again, I'm going to tuck it in, just pat it down, blend those fibers a little bit. Good. So now we're going to add a horizontal row on this side. We're not going to flip it over, not yet. So again, we start at the bottom and we're going to be doing horizontal rows. The fibers as much as possible are flush along the bottom. When we get to the edge of the hat, just an ever so tiny overlap. So now we're going to continue on with our horizontal rows. Once I've completed that, we'll have three layers on each side. And we're halfway done. Okay, so I'm just finishing off horizontal layer on this side. Right at the top, just a fraction of a little bit of overlap. And good, I'm just gonna pat that down together tuck it in at the bottom, 
pat it down and we're going to try and blend the sides. Good. Okay, so we've got three layers on each side. I'm going to continue on with this layering process um, until I have six layers on each side. Okay, so we've just finished layer four, and both sides are completed with layer four. Again, I'm just going to tuck it all nice together. Tuck it in at the bottom. Okay, so our last two layers, uh, five and six. So this was vertical rows. Here I'm going to be doing horizontal rows. Make sure we get a nice seam edge. And here we go. Same thing. Laying down one after the other. Good. So I'm just going to continue these rows one more time. Okay, so we have our five layers here. And I am going to add uh, a sixth layer, which is going to be a decorative element. Um, and I'm going to use uh, some kind of complementary color uh, on the surface here. The last rows were horizontal. So um, now I'm going to be adding uh, some of this blue. Okay, so we've just added our decorative uh, sixth layer and now we're ready to start the wet felting process. So 